we will uh, just quickly briefly exp uh, you know if you can share your board experience in the sense how many board members you have how long have you had them just briefly so that people get a context of how many people you're dealing with each one of you sure hi i'm uh, richa and um, i have five board members investor board members uh, on my board <laughs> 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 Vani being one of them, but um, an effective board management means two days before the board meeting, I show up at at a Kalari K Start event, <laughs> and that's uh, that's um, how we do it. Uh, our company has been four and a half years in into existence, and I think um, we were just having a chat, um, you know, uh, thirty minutes back, and um, from where I was in my first year, where I was exasperated and said, "How do I do this? How do I deal with all of this?" to now where I have a certain sense of uh, peace in, um, in the way I look at my board members and in the way I manage them. I, I, I would <laughs> I'd be happy to share some of my experiences. Swati. Hi everyone, um, I'm Swati, I'm the co-founder of Cashkoro.com. We are India's largest cashback and coupons website, so I'm sure all of you shop online. So next time if you visit any of your websites via Cashkoro, you get extra cashback from our side. That's my pitch for the day. Uh, <laughs> and um, we are, so we recently raised uh, investment from Kalari Capital. So one of our board members is from Kalari. Um, and we also, before that, did an angel round in the UK. So one board member is a UK person. So we have very two different types. Uh, Mr. Ratan Tata also invested in Kashkaro recently, though uh, he's not on the board. I think that would make our shareholder meetings that much more interesting, but unfortunately he's not. Um, for us, I think, I mean, obviously our journey is uh, shorter than, you know, some of the other um, accomplished panelists here. So my experiences haven't been as, um, maybe as eventful, so to speak. Um, but for, for me, it's never really been as much about managing the board. It's been more of a relationship that you have with people who you think can help in your business. Uh, sometimes I think the board has been helpful in actually taking stock of where we are, redefining priorities, having a sounding board uh, with whom you can discuss ideas. And most of the times uh, after a good discussion, the the, the to-do that we get is do what you think is right and that a decision that you can live by because ultimately it's, you know, I think our board members have respected the fact that founders have a vision and they need that space to do it. Um, but at the same time, it's valuable to have a little bit of guidance as well because um, that's what we do not have. Um, and I think in my experience, being honest with the board has been uh, helpful. It's easier to just have that conversation rather than figuring out your energy on to hide things forever. Um, so knowing your numbers, being honest, uh, that's, I think, worked for us. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Bharti. First, I think I should, uh, so I'm Shashank, uh, founded Practor about eight years back. I uh, would like to, you know, before hit, hit the question around the board management, all you know, just put out there why you know, I'm the odd man, odd man out here. Uh, when I heard about the event, I was uh, super excited. Uh, very few times do you actually hear about on, you know, women entrepreneurship uh, being spoken about and an event all around it. Um, so, you know, when I heard about it, I thought, you know, should definitely come and, uh, and contribute because just like the, what the last panel spoke, you know, I'm a complete believer that you know, be it 4% or 10%, the society will change dramatically and will transform if women entrepreneurship in India takes off. And it is taking off. And the way you know, this event is shaping up and the ones that will happen more, this is probably one of the biggest transformational things that we can do. Uh, so as being part of the startup ecosystem, happy to, you know, kind of see how we can contribute to that. So that's why I'm here. Now, speaking precisely around the board, uh, we, have, uh, we have a seven member board. Very interesting board. We have uh, representation from Google. So we have Americans on the board. Uh, we have representation from Tencent. So we have a few Chinese. Um, we have Sofina. So Belgiums are in there. Um, and then we have uh, Sequoia and Matrix uh, in, on, on our board. Of course, all of them, some of them are observers. Uh, and one thing that we have done very effectively is uh, the founders control the board. Uh, that ensures that even though we have all, uh, all the opinions on the table, um, it's end of the day, we try to optimize what's good for Practo and do, do that. Thank you. Uh, just one question for all of you and that is, what does effective board mean to you? And what should you, and some entrepreneur sitting here who's, uh, she's looking for investment, what should she expect from a board? You know, uh, do you want to Sure. 
Um, I'll just tell a quick story around, around uh, one incident that happened and then probably through this explain what, what effective board management means. So we've, um, so overnight I met one of our, uh, our competitors uh, in the market. And um, you know, the, the, you know, when you meet a competitor who's, who's hitting, you know, who's chipping away at your heels for the last few years, you know, the meeting is quite dramatic. Um, so we had this uh, meeting and somehow the meeting went really well. Um, and before you know it, there's an acquisition opportunity right on the table after four hours of, you know, talking and there's a potential match that can happen here. And that's when effective board management happens when, you know, you know, give your, give your board members a call at two in the night saying, Hey, listen up, you know, there's a, there's a really exciting opportunity where probably we could, you know, what we thought was an competitor, we could probably acquire them. Um, and we need to act fast. So can I meet you now at two in the night? Um, and, and, you know, the, of course, the, uh, the board members are like, you know, sorry, two in the night just don't, doesn't work. So I'm like, okay, six in the morning then. <laughs> because I need to work on this as fast as I can uh, to make sure that this, uh, this, is, this is the right thing for us. So six in the morning, I'm there, uh, you know, holding a board meeting, you know, and that's what I believe is required from every board member. Um, you know, required for them to be there when you need them. Um, doesn't matter if it's two, but doesn't matter if it's in the midnight, doesn't matter if it's early in the morning, do things you know, as if uh, they are a co-founder in the company and, and that's how the board members need to be and that's how reactive they need to be. doesn't matter what bigger name they are, doesn't matter, you know, which, how, much, how big a fund they manage. It's at that point in time what's good for the company that they should be uh, actively involved in. That's one, one quick uh, snippet of um, how we run a couple of board meetings at Practo. Um, apart from which, I think a couple of quick suggestions on being an effective board is trying to see if the board can be a, a good sounding I think one thing I, I've, I've learned in running effective board meetings is, you know, give a quick half an hour update, but don't make the entire board meeting about the update, you know, pick up two, three topics that you think you can take out of the meeting and question the board members. Many a times we, we feel we need to impress the board members. And so we have our decks prepared for, you know, 30, 40 slides and, you know, we're like, I want you to see all of these slides, right? And because of which we run through three hours very fast, we're not able to take their full inputs on uh, and how they can help us. So more than that, better thing to do is to give a quick update and probably even send the deck a day in advance so that you know they, they know what your numbers are like and use the board meeting to pick up two, three topics. And I see Indian entrepreneurs especially being afraid to ask questions from the board members. And the board members are supposed to answer them. The board members are supposed to help you and they are supposed to help you and be there and they are supposed to be coming prepared and they are supposed to come and help you. So a couple of days in advance, what we do is we send out a agenda, we send out our, uh, our deck and put up three questions that we think are supremely important that need to be answered, not by the entrepreneur, by the board. Um, so it's homework for them. Um, so th that helps us a lot and uh, you know, uh, thankfully we have some fantastic board members who, uh, who come into the meeting and, and, and you know, uh, are able to help us out with our questions. Since you have many more investors on and you've been, do you want to share what the effective board means to you and? Yeah, I think uh, it's, it's about... Vani is not here. Yeah, no, and, I and nobody is recording, right? <laughs> that I don't know. But no, I think uh, um, it's about actually aligning um, um, towards the greater success of the, the company and the business. And with every year um, that we have seen, our um, goalposts have changed. Strategically, we could have a very different point of view in the second year versus in the first year. And what is important for an effective board is also to understand at what stage the company is. And they have to also evolve to start giving guidelines or um, even their, their, their ask from what they expect from the, from their investment could also change basis what state the company is. And that has to all come together. And what you, what I know is what is a dysfunctional board or an ineffective board is where people have different agenda. People are not aligned to the greater success of the, of the company. And um, sometimes it's just that um, because you have different board members who are coming representing different um, investors, you know, different geographies, etc. They all have different points of view. So what you also don't want is the entrepreneur gets very confused at the end of it. Like, what do they all want? They seem to be all wanting different things. So who can I satisfy? Who can I not satisfy? So it's just important to just think about the business. And that is what I would say is more about effective. Board members. And Swati, would you say, um, you know, the board should be a coach or should it be a co-driver? 
I think it has to do a bit of both um, because the requirement is different. Uh, and I think what I like to do is that, you know, actually uh, prepare everything for the board materials and all of that and send it like four or five days in advance because I think it makes you appear in control um, that you're not scrambling around and you have all the data ready. And then I kind of think of the real things that the board is not going to like this time. And I, I think those are the elephants in the room. Um, and I try to identify that from before and say, these are the things in particular that I want your advice on. Exactly like what Shashank said as well, because we know that, for example, tech hiring is a challenge. So, and we are doing what we can, but we know that they will say, why can't you hire faster? Why can't you find people everybody else in the world can? So I just put it there in this meeting. I specifically want your advice on how to hire faster. Because I know that this will come up and sometimes I don't have the answer. But uh, I think shifting that onus a little bit is important because that's what I kind of think the board is there for. Um, this is a challenge and I'm doing what I can, but I need your help. Um, so I think it's about identifying because everybody has a different requirement. Sometimes we want um, people in our board to be a little bit of that Jerry Maguire kind of Mr. Connections uh, that I need your, uh, you know, connections, open up your network. We need these things. So um, I think something that we were not doing enough earlier was to ask and to talk about our challenges openly. But we do that now uh, because ultimately if we are, uh, you know, in this journey together, and I think it depends on what the investors like as well. For us, our investors have always been more like, look, uh, we are in this together and now we have invested, right? So it's not like we're going to take it out. So it's better to be upfront about all the challenges um, so I think we go to them for for coaching and co-driving both depending on what the what our challenges at that time um, and this question is for anyone all of you uh, you could talk about it how do you how do you suggest that uh, you know one of the young entrepreneurs here has taken money from has been funded by an investor two months later the entrepreneur thinks the strategy ought to be completely different and the investor director doesn't believe so, or has there is a difference of opinion. How should the young entrepreneur manage that or work in convincing? What should he, she do in that circumstance? Maybe I'll go first. Yeah, please. Um, I think um, one thing is, uh, one thing is about your, you know, investor relationships, which is slightly more different from board. Uh, it's very critical um, that when you are selecting your investor, that you select the investor more, which is it's more important to select the right investor for you than the amount he's giving you. It's more important to select the right investor than, you know, any conditions he's putting in. Okay. The most important thing is alignment with your investor. You know, trust me, that is the most painful relationship you're going to have in your company's history. Okay. <laughs> so you make sure that you're picking the person who's on your wavelength and not every, I mean, that there is a particular pairing that happens, but it's very important to choose the right investor who believes in you, your vision and your company's you know, vision. So it's that to me is the most important one. If that connection happens, then the medium term, how do you get there can keep changing. But as long as the destination is the same, and you both are prepared for the right destination. The how you get there part can keep changing and you know, they will not have too many concerns around it. It is where you want to go to, where if you have differences in that, then you are a little, you know, it's very painful that way, right? So it is uh, critical when you're picking your investors to pick the ones whom, you know, whom you're, you know, where you're the match on the vision side. And the second thing, how to handle this, you know, uh, this different, you know, U-turns or detours you have to take is you have to keep a very good investor relationship constant. It, you can't wait for only board meetings to connect to the investors. It is important that, you know, on a monthly basis, at least you're in touch with them so that they have a touch with, you know, what you're doing and you build a connection beyond the board with them. So you, they have an idea, you have a personal relationship and those things are also uh, matters a lot. So I think these are the two things, Bharti, that, uh, you know, would really help is one, select the right investor from the start and second, yeah, is keep a continuous relationship and engagement with them and communication with them so that they, they are not surprised by anything. You know, they, they know your challenges, they know what you're, what you're up to. So, you know, I at least make sure that with my investors, uh, there's at least once in a month, there's either a call or a physical meeting that happens, you know, and there are seven of them that I work with. So it is a handful, but, you know, it is possible to do that. I, th I think actually one, one would be surprised and maybe you should be worried if actually in two months you decide to change your entire plan and the board doesn't say anything because then is the board even awake? Because uh, what actually warrants a change in just two months? 
so it's like you know if you are if you are a kid in college and you are always studying to be a doctor and suddenly you decide to be an engineer it's only fair if your parents ask you right why are you doing that so i think it's fair that um, it warrants a conversation and at that point maybe it's good that you know rather than it being an impulsive decision uh, it's important that the entrepreneur is again going to go through the facts and the business model and the data around that change in decision and as long as that makes sense um, there shouldn't be a disagreement and richa how do you manage not this uh, yeah. how do you manage uh, conflicts amongst the investors if there are you know you have five investor directors some of them may <laughs> yeah um, how do you um, that? i think fortunately for us we don't have um, um, a conflicting board member i think that's where board members right between them if there is conflict it's mostly between the entrepreneur and the board advisor we are on the two opposite sides um, opposite ends of the table but um, usually if um, if i mean if there were to be um, you know two board members who possibly see the business differently i think it's very important for the entrepreneur to figure out what is it that she wants i'm going to say she here because it's you know this event is more about women entrepreneurs it's not money <laughs> she's saying she she wants so i think it's important and therefore align the other board members also so sometimes we would have a difference in strategy but there is a there is a way in which i think um, you know the business needs to move in a certain path now it's my job to convince everybody and it's not necessary everybody will uh, meaningfully see or align to what you are saying and say will resonate very strongly but it's really important that you do your bit to say that listen i'm you know this is what we should do and and most often they're not very mature board members actually get convinced if the entrepreneur is saying this with conviction with data and you know and then you know you, i think the inputs are more important than the outcomes we can never con uh, control the outcome but if if the board is aligned that okay we will do we go this way and these are the things that we will invest in um then you've got your job done you have your job is already done but bhati i want to ask you a question because it's it's unfair that uh, you know you are moderating and when you know um what is effective i mean she said before that i don't like the word managing a board and i like to uh, understand from bharti because i'm sure you've seen enough conflict where you said how can you ever work with this entrepreneur <laughs> so what do you think is an effective board and why do you hate the word managing a board um i think so i'll think i'll answer the easier one first managing board to me that that presupposes that there are conflicts presupposes that there isn't an alignment of interest that presupposes that both are on different page the moment we are an investor in a company and we are there as an investor director we are on the same side as the entrepreneur we have same alignment of goals which is growing the company and creating a sustainable enterprise for all parties it's not just for one stakeholder because i don't think you can ever create a sustainable company for one stakeholder whether it's an investor or an entrepreneur or employees it doesn't work it has to be a win win across all stakeholders so i think that's that's why i find it hard in you know, i i struggle with this statement managing because you shouldn't be managing right everybody is on the same page on the same side two i think for me um you know i'm on the board so you'll have to ask the you know, where i am on the board whether i'm being effective board or what it means uh but i think uh, the <clears throat> what i have seen is uh, very often the entrepreneurs view the board meetings as you know a report card and a personal report card it's never a personal report card a it's never personal ne it's never rep a report card so therefore the moment you delink the personal and professional it becomes easier so you know a lot of entrepreneurs think i'm going to this board meeting i'll be judged on my report card am i going to get an a star am i going to get an a or any e minus i think the moment you remove that the conflicts will disappear there won't be any conflict because you're all working towards creating this sustainable enterprise company a b or whatever that's an independent entity so i think i often find that and uh, i find entrepreneurs are a lot like teenagers so I've dealt with a teenage daughter, so I think I can manage that better. Uh, that was more teenager in the sense that I think very often entrepreneurs are, and rightly so, want to uh, learn on their own, want to go and experiment on their own. And there are investor directors sitting on the board saying, 
I've been there, done that. I've been there, seen that. Why aren't you listening to me? And I always tell my co-investors, you haven't had a teenage child. That's why you're wondering why, because they all have to go through that. So which is, to me, which is okay. Um, and the, the role I see myself is, you know, the question when I asked the coach versus co-driver, the, actually the question was more coach versus backseat driver. I see myself more as a coach. I am not, uh, I don't believe the board should, board should have the nose in, limbs out. You cannot be limbs in, nose in, everything in, then you, you know, as a board, we become part of the problem. And fundamentally, you have to trust that the uh, entrepreneur is in the market, therefore he or she knows her market better than a board member will ever know, sitting out. So, and uh, entrepreneur by definition will have our ideas people, right? That's why they're entrepreneurs. They have high energy, high idea energy. They want to keep experimenting all the time. So as a board, we have to make sure we don't curb that energy, curb those ideas, and yet not risk the company on that. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. That was very interesting.